Okay, so um, does anybody have any questions over something that they saw in the homework or something they saw on the review or anything that they saw um, as far as the directions? You can click on the direct, you can see most of the directions inside the information about the review. Um, actually, no, if you click on the test, you can see the information. And you can click on the test without having to go into um, lockdown browser. So let me share my screen real quick and go into the class. And you will not need lockdown browser just to view the directions of a test, okay? So you can go in and you can click on the test and I should move this down because I believe we've all finished the orientation module now. Okay. So you should be able to click on the test. Now I think for you, it does not look like this. <laughs> it looks like this. And then when you're ready, you would scroll to the bottom and you would click the button that says um, start quiz, right? So you can see these directions without using the lockdown browser um, before taking the actual test. I've had two people take the test, but I think both of those folks were from the online class and no one yet from um, this face-to-face -face class has taken the test yet, okay? But there are all of the directions in there. I also wanna take this time to go over, before I go over these directions, I just wanna talk about what I sent out in um, as an email over the weekend. I did finally get a chance over the weekend to look at your guys' um, videos that you, while you're doing the readiness quiz, it took a video of you. And then um, I watched those videos just to make sure that you were following all the guidelines and that you were doing all of the setup as you were supposed to. Um, and then what else did I do? And then I looked at your paperwork to make sure that it got in there within the 30 minutes. Um, I looked to see to make sure that you followed all the rules, that you were able to create one PDF file and not five pages means five PDF files. It's five pages on one PDF file. Um, and so then I basically came out with all of these. And I did add all of this information to the test policy um, because it is important and it is going to affect your grade. And so anything that's gonna affect your grade, I need to make sure that I clarify that and put it inside the syllabus. So I did put an amendment in the syllabus. So if we go to the course syllabus, I'll show you where the amendment is. So if I go down to course policies, under test policy, you'll see down at the bottom, it says amendment, and then it has the date that I added it, which I believe was Saturday. Okay, when I sent out the email. And so all of it, all that it's saying is that um, there are rules and then it gives you e the reason for each rule. And if any one of these five rules is not met, um, you do get a zero on the test because these rules have to pertain with test security. So there's a whole bunch of ways you can get a zero. And in my experience, about half the class is going to get a zero <laughs> on the first test. It happens because you've got to get used to this procedure. But I try to eliminate that from happening by giving you the opportunity to practice with that readiness quiz. Um, for some, they didn't need any practice. They got it all right the first time. Um, for others, I feel like once you kind of understand what you were missing, then you'll be able to do it perfectly when it's time to take the first test. And then there's other people who just struggle with directions, period, and they're going to have issues. And those are the ones that end up getting zeros because they can't follow um, the rules, okay? So I just wanna make sure I'm doing my part to make everything very clear so that you guys are aware of what could happen and all the different ways that you could end up with a zero, okay? Um, one of the rules, is that you have to make sure that you are using your lockdown browser when you try to take the test. So if I just wanna view the directions and see what the note sheet's gonna look like for the test, I do not need to use lockdown browser. You just open up the test like normal, just don't click begin quiz at the bottom, okay? Um, 
if you are going to take the test, like you're like, this is the day I'm taking it right now, then you have to open up Canvas in the lockdown browser. So just like you open up Chrome and you log into ACES and you click on Canvas, that whole process, you just click on the lockdown browser, op log into ACES, get into Canvas, and then click on the test, okay? Um, and then, go, of course, we know the reason for that. I mentioned it before, but just to recap that, it is to prevent you from using outside websites so that you're not using any information that you're not allowed to have during a test, okay? It should be you, the test, your paper, your calculator that's allowed, and that's it, okay? Um, you might have to have your photo ID on the desk too because you will need that when you're doing the setup for Respondus, okay? Um, so rule number two, it has to do with the photo ID. I think I had about three people in this class that did not show me the photo ID. I have to have that. If I can't verify that it's actually the person enrolled that is taking this test, then the test can't count for a grade. It will be a zero, right? Um, so make sure that when you do the respondents that you actually have a photo ID. Now, whether it's a military ID, a state issued ID, like a driver's license or a state uh, identification card, um, or if it's a student ID, any one of those three are perfectly okay to use, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind. I think I had one person put, I guess they applied for an, an ID on the computer and then it comes up with this little paper that you print and it has like your photo and all your ID information. And I accept those as well. So somebody took a picture of that and uploaded um, held it to the screen so that I could use that as the identification. Um, that's okay, as long as it's got your photo, your name, and it's coming from the state, okay, or from the school. So, again, if I can't verify your, the person that's supposed to be taking the test, I can't give you that test score, right, so it would be a zero. Um, rule three is when you're setting up the respondents video, I had a bunch of things happening here. Okay, some people were showing me their desk area, but then not showing me the room. Some people were showing me the room and then not the desk area. Some people had all the lights off and I couldn't see anything because it was so dark. Okay, um, and so I put in here to make sure that you show the 360 of the room so I can verify there's no one in the room. It's a couple of things. I wanna verify there's no one in the room that's old enough to help you, right? Children and pets, that's fine, it's not a violation. They can't really help you with calculus, I don't think, um, or with algebra. So 360 review, so I can make sure there's nobody in the room that shouldn't be. I can make sure that there's no extra devices on your desk or anywhere within reach in your room that you shouldn't be using, like another laptop, a tablet, um, a cell phone, anything like that should not be within reach. Now, if you're here on your desk and behind you is your bed, and your bed's way over there and your cell phone's sitting on your bed, that's not within reach. I am literally going to see you turn around to go grab that phone and that's obvious, right? But if it's within reach, I can sit here and look at the camera and be, you know, acting like I'm doing my paper and then just grab my phone, open it, you know, look down like I'm looking at my papers and I could search something, right? So that's what I'm looking for in the 360 view is just to make sure that there's no extra devices that are unauthorized within reach, okay? and that there's no people in the room. Now the desk, I'm looking for the same thing, except it's a little bit um, more concentrated on exactly what's within your reach. And I'm looking to make sure that you're not using an unauthorized calculator, like a graphing calculator. You're only using the scientific calculator. I'm also making sure, um, again, that there's no laptops or phones or anything like tablets within reach, okay? If you have a second monitor, cover the second monitor with like a sheet or a blanket or a scarf or something, but just cover it up, okay? Um, and when you're doing the whole environment check, be sure to move your camera pretty slow, okay? There's no time limit on which you need to do your um, environment check. It's not like you gotta get it in within 10 seconds. It doesn't work like that, okay? You have some time to get that environment check in. So make sure you're moving the camera slowly because I saw a couple of people were just like zooming the camera all around the room and I didn't see anything because everything's so blurry when you go real fast, okay? So make sure you do go slower, not super slow, but slow enough for me to catch um, the visuals of what's happening in the room, okay? And then also, of course, be sure that there's proper lighting. 
open the window, turn on the light, do something, but you cannot take the test in the dark. I cannot see anything. And I need to be able to see in order to verify the test security, okay? So very, very important there. Um, rule number four has to do with your um, for face in the frame. I noticed that a lot of people had the camera like this where all I could see was their eyes and the top of their head. And then some people had their face like this, but then started doing their test with their head down. And so all I could see was the tops of their heads, okay? Anytime you do that, it flags your video suspicious. And I literally have to sit there and watch the entire video in order for me to mark it that I viewed your video. Whereas if you do keep your face in the frame, if it happens to flag you because you turn around and go grab your phone or because you do something, you know, quote unquote suspicious, then I only have to look at that part of the video. I honestly don't have time. I cannot spend 11 hours watching everyone's full test video <laughs> and then go and spend another hour per person to grade those things when I've got all these classes. That's literally a whole week's worth of work. And that's not even talking about, you know, actual class periods or um, preparing for lectures or answering the emails or anything. Um, so the better that you help me out when it comes to all of this test security stuff, the faster you're gonna be able to get that feedback, okay? I can only work so many hours within a day um, and I'm only paid to work so many hours within a day. So I've gotta make sure that, I make sure I set the standards right, you guys follow those standards and then it makes everything flow smoothly for everyone, okay? Um, then test or rule five is going to be that one, the big one, right? Where you got to upload your paperwork within 30 minutes. And then again, the reason that that is there is so that no one's correcting their papers. You're keeping everything pretty much equivalent to the way it is in a face-to-face -face class where once the test time is up, you have to turn in your papers. You don't get to go look back at your papers and make changes. Okay. You should not be doing that in an online class or on an online test either. So if any one of those five rules is not met, you don't show me an ID, I don't see all of your room, I don't see all of your desk, I don't see all of your face while you're taking the test, um, and you don't upload your work on time. If those five rules are broken, any one, it just takes one rule to be broken for you to get a zero on the test, okay? In addition to that, I think that's it really, because I think the other rule I had up here about getting a zero was if you didn't turn in your paperwork or if you, you can't turn it in late, you're, you're just no way because I lock it so that once the deadline hits, you can't even view the assignment anymore. So there shouldn't be really any late paperwork submissions unless someone tries to go email it to me, but I do not accept paperwork by email, okay? Again, I'm trying to streamline the whole grading process. Otherwise it takes hours upon hours just for one person. Um, I don't wanna be looking in this email, looking in that email, looking at Remind, looking everywhere for everyone's work. Everyone's work should be in one place so that I can find it and access it easily and I can just start grading, okay? So if it's not uploaded the way it's supposed to be uploaded, um, then you also get a zero on your test. And make sure you're following these four rules. They're not that complicated. Make sure your pages are numbered. This helps me so that when I print, if I happen to drop the papers on the way to my office, I at least can number everything back the way it's supposed to go. Um, make sure that your problems are done in order. This helps me when I'm grading, so I'm not scrolling everywhere trying to look for number five and then scrolling everywhere trying to look for number six. I know everything's gonna be there in order. Make sure that the scans are clear, not blurry or not too light. Um, and, and that's just, of course, so that I can see it and I can make sure that I'm able to grade your paperwork, right? Um, and then the next one is just make sure that it's all one PDF file. So if you have five pages of paperwork, then make sure that all five pages are included in one PDF file. It'll just have five pages. Somebody did ask in the chat, it says, where do we upload the paperwork again? Good question. Um, if you go into the modules, here is the test that you will take at some point today. It's due at 11.59. I suggest that you start taking it an hour beforehand. 
maybe an, even an hour and 10 minutes beforehand. So you have time to set up all of the respondents and then you have the whole 60 minutes to actually work on the math. It is only 10 questions, um, but if you look here, then, oops, I clicked on it again, but I'll go back. If you click there, you can click begin test, um, and that's where you actually take the test. You just have to use the lockdown browser and you have to set up the whole webcam thing, okay? And then the paperwork upload is here. Now, someone says, is uploading our paperwork on Google Docs okay? Um, no, I mean, yes and no. Yes, that's great for you. That's not gonna help me if you put it in Google Docs, okay? Go ahead and take it, you know, the pictures from your phone, convert them into a PDF, however you're doing that, and then shoot it to your Google Docs. Or if you have to shoot the images to your Google Docs and then use your computer to create the, the PDF file. However, you're creating the PDF file you eventually have to import this um, document, okay? So if you have it on Google Docs, that's fine, but you do have to import it in here. So on your end, I don't know if it's gonna let me see this. Yeah, no, it's not, because I didn't do all the other stuff. But when you do do this, um, it does ask you to upload a file, and so you're gonna browse your computer to look for it. So at some point you are gonna have to pull it from your Google Docs unless you have your Google Docs in your folder already. So if you have you know, a folder here that has your Google documentation, then you can upload it on your computer using your Google Docs, it's not a problem. But like, if you notice mine, mine does not have my Google Docs in here. So for me, I would have to save my Google Doc to my computer put it somewhere where I can find it in some kind of folder where I could find it. Some people choose to just stick it on the desktop. Um, and then when it asked me to upload, I would grab it from that desktop or from that folder that I sent it to, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But that whole entire process, you're supposed to have practiced before today. That was the whole purpose of that readiness quiz. You can go back, I will change it if you wanna keep practicing before you have to do it for the test. Before you even take the test, practice it if you haven't already. Um, I will open this one again because it closed on the 26th. And um, that way you can just go in there and keep practicing. So just get like five pieces of paper, write page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, snap your photos and practice that process of creating the PDF file and uploading it here um, to make sure that you know how to do it properly. So let me change the due date on this practice. So that way, if anyone wants to practice it before taking the test, you can. Otherwise, it's closed and you won't be able to do anything there. Okay. And even if you already uploaded a file, you can upload another one. Okay. So I'm sure everyone uploaded the file because um, that's what we did for the orientation, right? To get through the orientation, you had to put a file in there but just now practice doing a whole new one and try to do it within that 30 minutes. It should take two to six minutes. There were some people already, I guess you guys are pros or maybe you have experience with it, but it did take a few people just like two or three minutes to get it in there. It took some people about five or six minutes. Um, and then I think a lot of people took more than the 30 minutes. So especially those folks that did not do it within 30 minutes the first go round, please practice the process beforehand, okay? That way you're, you're set and you're ready for that test. Okay, now the test itself has, of course, the general rules. So you know the rules about the lockdown respondent, the lockdown browser and the respondents, right? Those five rules. Aside from that, you need to make sure that you're aware no graphing calculators are allowed. If you are using unauthorized materials and graphing calculators are unauthorized materials, that literally fits the definition of academic dishonesty, which is a nice fancy way of saying cheating, okay? So if you do, if I do see a graphing calculator on the desk or within reach, um, you will get a zero and I have to report it. Not only do you get the zero, but now I have to report the incident to um, the academic affairs department because they need to be aware of anything that happens that's academic dishonesty. 
same thing with the videos and all of that. I had someone cover the video, cover the camera during the test or during the readiness quiz. I get it that it's just a practice quiz, so it's not that big of a deal, but no one should be covering their camera while taking the test. If that happens, it's a flat zero. I have no idea what's going on if you just covered the camera, right? You could have called in your buddy, your buddy could have sat there and taken the test for you, and then you pull the camera off when you're, the cover off when you're done, okay? So definitely don't ever cover the camera while you're testing, okay? Um, and then this is a big one. I had some people turn in paperwork already and I noticed right away that they didn't even give me an answer or justification. They didn't give me a justification, explanation or solution at all for some of the problems. Right there, the highest they can get is one point for that problem, even though that problem is worth 10 points, okay? Don't wanna do that to you yourself. You will literally make a 10 on the test. If all you do is select the right answers, and never explain how you got those answers, okay? You will literally make a 10 on the test if everything is marked correct, but nothing is shown on your paperwork, okay? That is not my goal here. I wanna make sure that you guys are um, able to explain your solutions. You are able to communicate mathematically. I need to make sure of that, okay? So that's why I have the rubric the way I have the rubric. So if you look on, not only that, any problems not answered on Canvas um, can't be counted for credit because then I can't guarantee that you actually did that problem during test time. So if you selected the top answer, but yet, um, or you didn't select anything on number two, let's say number two, I didn't select anything. I could have just left it blank after I turned it all in, then did number two with my notes because I'm not on camera no more, and then upload number two with the correct answer. You won't get credit because it wasn't answered on the test itself, okay? So like I said, I can't verify whether that problem was done during the actual test or afterward unless it is marked on the test. So you do select the answer for number two. Um, also, if your paperwork and your answers on the computer don't match, okay, um, then I have to, then I can't select any credit for that either, okay, because again, that could have meant that you changed your answer and that's why you got this answer instead of the one you selected. So make sure that your answers that you select do match what is on your paper, okay. Um, and here is the rubric for the test. So again, one point only for selecting the correct answer. You get zero points for this part of the rubric if you don't select the correct answer. So it is possible to select the wrong answer and still get like eight or nine points for that problem, the majority of the credit for that problem. Um, if you have everything else nice and neat, it's just some kind of small error. So here for the notation, notation, if you notice, it's two points per problem. With 10 problems, that's 20 points for notation. So notation itself is worth 20% of this test grade. That's how important notation is. That means that a square should look like a square, a parenthesis should look like a parenthesis, and everything that you're doing should make sense, right? You're not just gonna be uh, doing chicken scratch on your paper, okay? It needs to be mathematical equations, mathematical expressions line by line, okay? Um, Partially incorrect is one point for notation and then mostly or completely incorrect would be zero points, okay? Or if nothing is shown, you would get zero points for notation also. Um, correct or flawless solutions slash explanations, that's worth seven points. So 70% of your grade does come from your explanations. So make sure you're explaining this stuff on your paper. Arithmetic errors, you'll get one point off, so you'll get six points awarded. If there's multiple arithmetic errors, you'll get two points off, which means you can still earn five points. That's like if I added um, one, take away three, and somehow I ended up with negative three or something, you know, just silly things that happen along the, the process. It's the process really that I'm concerned with. Um, minor conceptual errors, so if you don't understand the process a little bit, but for the most part you do, that would be four points off or three points awarded. 
and then major conceptual error, like you really don't understand how to do the problem, then you'll get six points off, which is just one point earned. And if there's absolutely nothing on your paper that shows how you got the answer, then you get zero points for your explanation. So you would essentially just get one point because I'd have no notation to grade and no solution to grade. So you'd literally only have the one point and that's if you selected the correct answer. You get zero points if you didn't even select anything or you didn't select the correct thing, okay? So make sure that you do there. The password is right here. I put it in there. I don't bold it or anything because I want to make sure you're reading all of the directions thoroughly. Um, and if you do, hopefully you catch that um, password. A lot of people will email me, what's the password? It's in there and it's like in disguise kind of because I want to make sure that you're reading everything. And this is the only notes that you'll have for this test. So the only notes you'll have are these few formulas here. Other than that, everything else you should be able to do. You should be able to know how to factor out a GCF. You should be able to know how to factor a trinomial using that AC method or whatever method you learned in the past. You should be able to factor the binomials using these formulas. And the formulas are there in case you forget them. And then you should know how to solve the equations using factoring, okay? It's really all this test is covering is those concepts, factoring out a GCF, factoring out um, binomials, expressions with two terms using these formulas, factoring trinomials using the AC method, factoring um, polynomials with four terms using the grouping, and then of course solving your equations by factoring, okay? So that's all I have to say about the test. And it took me about 30 minutes to cover all of that, okay? But that's what I need to say just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Does anybody have any problems that they want me to talk about, whether it be from the homeworks or the review, um, but anything or any specific questions that I haven't addressed or maybe you didn't hear or understand, but anything that you have, go ahead. You can either type them in the chat or you can come off of mute and ask. If I don't have any questions, that means everybody knows everything, right? Y'all know how to do all this stuff. You're gonna ace it and you know exactly how the test procedure is gonna work. I'm not gonna have any issues, right? I have a question. Thank you. <laughs> what is your question? <laughs> the things locked for me, like the modules, it just, it's stuck on the, uh, oh, hold on. Is this Abraham, Abraham? Okay, let me stay or you know what let me stop recording for a moment just so never that mind i'm okay never mind i i, sure? I forgot to click something yeah oh it was just clicking something yeah Part of the story page maybe right no i forgot to click the mark as done oh <laughs> gotcha <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah for all of those all i have is mark done so notice here that it says mark done um i think on let me try to do student view and see if it'll let me it might not um, okay, so it's going to make me view these pages real quick. So this is the timeline. We already talked about that. Today's the day, right? Today we're supposed to do the test. Um, I don't want to do... There's all the lecture videos that we recorded for this unit. And I'm trying to get here. So once you click on this, you load it in a new window and you finish homework one, you do need to come back here and click this button that says mark done, okay? And then that should unlock it so that you could go to do the next homework assignment and so forth, okay? So you just keep going through all the homeworks. I do see your comments in the chat. I will get to them, okay? Um, this one, for some reason, I forgot to click mark as done. I'll fix it in a moment. Um, and don't lie, don't mark it done if it's not actually done. Because if I see that it's marked done, I'm assuming that you did it and there's no going back if you already said it's done. Um, and then you get to the test. Okay. So someone says I didn't submit the review in time. Do I just mark it done? Yeah, unfortunately, yes, because you're in that situation. Yeah, if you didn't get to something 
because the due date's already passed for the homework. I think it closed at a 7.59 this morning because I wanted all the homework and the review done before class so that you would have your questions ready, right? Um, so yes, if you didn't get to any of the homework assignments last night, like you missed them or you missed the review, go ahead and mark them done because you're gonna have to in order to get to the test. Yes, you can do that. Um, are the formulas going to be on the test or do we have to write it down? You can, no, you cannot. You cannot have no cheats in this paper. So when you do have paper on your desk, it does need to be completely blank. You cannot have notes in this test. I have not received any accommodation letters from the disability services. So there's no one in the class as of now that is allowed to have a note sheet. All the formulas and stuff that you need are on the test itself. I don't wanna go too far down because I don't wanna get into the questions. Oh, it does say take quiz. But literally what you see here on my, on my screen is exactly what you're gonna see. And then below that's gonna be question one, question two, question three. So you can always scroll back up to the top to see these formulas and then scroll back down to your problem. So they will be on the test. Every test will have all the formulas that you'll need, okay? Processes, those are the things that you're gonna need to know how to do. Like the process of solving uh, polynomial equations, right? The whole process is to make it equal to zero, factor everything on the side that has all of the junk on it, and then set each factor equal to zero, solve the resulting mini equations, and then you have all of your solutions, right? So you'll have to know that process. That's one thing that isn't given on the note sheet, right? Um, you can still look at it in WebAssign, even though somebody asked if they could still look at the review just to like help study, right? Um, you can still look at the review inside WebAssign, except it'll probably have the answers in there now because the due date's already gone by. So you'll just be able to go over it if you still want to. You just won't be able to do it for a grade as for credit, unless you use one of your three um, extension requests, okay? Now, everyone should have a lockdown browser already installed. Somebody's asking, do I need to uh, download the lockdown browser to get into the test? You had to download it to do the readiness quiz and everyone's done the readiness quiz. So I know you have lockdown browser on a computer already. All you have to do is go find it and open it. Okay, you don't need to re-download it, but that is a good question. Okay, I don't know if anybody in this class is messaging me. So let me grab my, I hear my phone going off, but I don't know if it's any, buddy in this class. No, it's not. It's another class. Okay. I have okay. a question. Sure. Um, on the homework, can you go over the uh, completely factored it out so that you can do it at home? Mm -hmm. Is there a certain problem? It was uh, 54 minus 24z squared. 54 minus 24? 24z squared. All righty, thank you. Let me change my camera and let me stop sharing my computer so we can get this in. Make sure that you pin my video so that you can see my paper very large. Otherwise it's difficult to try to, there it is. Okay. I need to pin my own video because now I see it real tiny. Um, pin. Okay, so this problem here, does that look like what you said? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the question, <laughs> whoever uh, was asking the question, I guess it's Kenneth, this guy who's talking? Uh, yes. It's, it's okay, Kenneth. you were coming in and out and they didn't hear, but they were asking me to do a difference of squares problem and then they asked me to do this question specifically. So that if you didn't hear it, that's what was being said. So the first thing you have to do, no matter what it looks like, whether it's two terms, three terms, or four terms, the first thing you have to do is factor out a greatest common factor. And so I know that two goes into both of these, but I think more than two goes into both of those. Let me see, does 54 divided by three? Oh yeah. So I know two and three go into both of those. Let's see if six goes into both of those. 
it does go into that one and it does go into that one. And there's nothing else that would go into nine and four. So then that tells me that my GCF or greatest common factor is gonna be six. So then I have to actually factor that six out. And 54 divided by six was nine. And then 24 divided by six was four. So now I have this expression, okay? And then this is a square and it is a difference. So I can um, break it up into the difference of squares where I figure out what goes in the front, what goes in the back, one has a plus and one has a minus, right? Just don't forget your GCFs. I had a bunch of messages over the weekend about the homework and a lot of people were giving me this as their final answer and forgetting that they took a six out at the very, very beginning, okay? So do make sure that whatever your GCFs are, they have to be in the final answer up here in the front, okay? Don't forget those guys. So then I just need to figure out what's being squared here and what's being squared here. On this side, anybody know what squared gives me nine? Three. Mm -hmm. And this one's a little bit harder, but what squared would give me four Z squared? Do them separately. Uh, Go ahead. Two. What, yeah, two the number two. And then what about the variables? Uh, Z. Z, you got it. So then three is in the front. So that means that three has to go on the front there, which makes sense. Three times three is nine, right? And then the two Z is in the back. So those have to go in the backs, two Z and two Z. And so then that makes sense too, because a negative two Z times a positive two Z gives me that negative four Z squared. Okay. And then this is your final answer, the whole thing with the GCF. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so in the formula, the formula says something like this. So really all you're trying to do is figure out what's in there and what's in there to figure out the A's and then to figure out the B's, okay? But I didn't have to write the formula, I just needed to use it, okay? But this is what I mean by showing work. You may not write this, you may not write that, you may not even write that, but I need to at least see this step before I see your answer, okay? You have to show something. And if the problem was just this, just the nine minus four Z squared, and you write, this is the answer, I still need an explanation. All you have to do is say, I use difference of squares. That's my explanation. And that's perfectly fine, okay? So make sure you're using something to explain how you're getting your answers. If you have a problem like this, Okay, and then you just have the answer. I know that you can do that without having to write any steps down. I can do that problem myself too, without having to write any steps down. I didn't need to go through all the AC method. I know how to factor this properly. If I FOIL this out, it does equal this. So if that's you, if you do know how to factor without going through all the whole processes, it's okay to do that, but explain what you did. And what you did here was you factored by trial and error. Whenever you do it and you just know what the answer is, that's the method that it's called. The method is called trial and error. And so you put it there, you double check it, and if it's correct, then it's trial and no error, right? <laughs> but if you guess and then it's wrong, that's the trial and error process, okay? But you can do that, you just have to explain what you're doing. Does anyone have any other questions? I have a question on the problem. Sure. It's uh, two plus seven X minus four X squared equals zero. And I want you to solve it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. First thing is we have to put it in the right order. So we're gonna put this. So remember that minus goes with that four, that plus goes with that seven and the two is positive. So it'll turn into plus two. Now that it's in order, you're supposed to try to factor it. 
But since it's a trinomial that you're trying to factor, I know automatically I'm going to have to use my AC method. So I need to figure out what's going to go there and there so that I can factor by grouping, right? That's the hard part. So I'm going to come over here to the side. Again, I like to use colors, but if you're using all just one pencil or pen, just do squigglies and then just write side work. So I know that this has nothing to do with the flow of your equation, okay? Don't put your chicken scratch in the middle there, okay? It just makes it really, really hard to read. Um, and it's really easy for you to get confused between your actual equation and your chicken scratch, okay? Or side work is the formal way to say it. <laughs> okay, so I need to figure out what times what equals A times C. So I'm just gonna write the number negative eight and then to get B. So that would be a seven, okay? So then the one with the times is the one I break up, right? And there's really only two options here because three doesn't go into that. And I think that's it. If I do the square root of eight, it's actually two point something. So I wouldn't even go beyond two. But to get me a seven, I would have to use these. And because the seven is positive, that means the bigger number is positive. But when I multiply these, I have to get a negative, right? Which means that guy would have to be a negative. So let's look at it, negative one and positive eight. Let's double check the math and make sure we get the right results. Negative one times eight is negative eight. Negative one plus eight is positive seven. So we have the magic numbers. So it's gonna be negative one and positive eight. Remember, you're breaking up an X, and when you combine them, you need to have 7X. So that means these should have X. So that negative 1X plus 8X is positive 7X. That allows you to write it because this line is equivalent to this line. But now that I have it like this, I can break it up and do my grouping. So this side has a negative, if there's a negative in the front, you have to factor that out as a GCF. You don't have a choice. You have to factor out the negative when it's in front. And then they do have an X in common. So when I factor that X out and the negative, I'm gonna end up with four X minus one. And if you distribute and you get these two guys, you know you factored correctly. Here, I have to bring down my plus sign and these two guys can both be divided by two. And so then this should match this, four X, and actually that won't be negative, that would be positive, right? Because a negative times a positive is negative, negative times a positive is negative. And this one should match that one. But let's make sure, positive two times positive four X is positive eight X, positive two times positive one is a positive two. So it does work out then factor what they have in common. And what you're left with is what's on the outsides, the negative X and the positive two. This is still equal to zero in both steps. And now that you have it factored, so that's a big step too. First step in solving equations is make sure it's equal to zero. It already was, put it in the right order. We already did that. The factoring part is what takes the longest sometimes. Um, and then after that, you just set each factor equal to zero. And then you solve the resulting baby equations. So if I minus one, I get four X equal to negative one. And then if I divide by four, I get X equals negative one fourth. Over here, if I minus two, I get negative X equals negative two. If I divide by the little negative one in front of there, I get X equals positive two. And so those are your two answers, negative one fourth and positive two. Anyone else have any, or the same people, if you have more questions. Now is the time to ask, If you don't have any questions, um, then I will cut the class early. So we will be able to leave early today. You can use the remaining of class time to go look over the review, 
and take the test right now if you want to, or you can wait until later to take the test. But the test itself is 60 minutes. So if you want all 60 minutes, here's how it works. Paperwork is due at 11.59. The test is due at 11.29 so that you have that 30 minute block to get it done before 11.59, right? So since the test is gonna stop at 11.29 p.m., you wanna give yourself an hour, so 10.29 p.m. But you also wanna give yourself a little bit of time to do the setup for respondents, the, the ID check, the photo, the 360 view of your room, all your desk area, all of that good stuff. Give yourself about 10 minutes to get that done. So I would suggest if you're gonna procrastinate and wait till the very last minute, that 9.20 or 10.20 p.m. is gonna be your last minute where I would suggest that you actually start that test at that point, okay? Just to make sure that you have the whole 60 minutes if you should need it. Some people are taking the test in like 15 minutes and that's okay, but you never know which boat you're in <laughs> until you get in there and you do it. So I, just to be safe, start by 10, 20 p.m. the absolute latest today. Other than that, guys, you guys are free to go and get working on that. I will upload this paper and I will upload this video as soon as it processes and, and I get the okay to download it. But other than that, you guys have a good day. Bye, Miss. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.